Today we're going to be reviewing Sun Lu's Tough Resin, which I have here in gray, as well as some resin detergent uh, that basically is used to clean any prints that are printed in a non-water washable resin. There's nothing too special that comes out of the boxes of these. The resin contains a couple resin filters, contains three filters. And the resin is pretty well packaged in both bubble wrap, a sealed container, and the cap also has a seal on it. Has some recommended exposure times, bottom exposure times, layer counts, that sort of thing. And your stereotypical warnings on the label. And we're just going to go ahead and dive into our first print, which will be our torture bowl test. And one thing to note about this resin is that the smell it does smell like most other resins, but it's not particularly strong uh, like some other resins that I've used, but uh, it does have a pretty standard flat gray color and we'll see how it turns out in the final prints. And through the power of YouTube magic, our print is done. We did have one failure that we then went back and re-leveled the bed and uh, reapplied some FEP but this one, after this, everything started to come out pretty perfectly. So we'll go ahead and take it off of our flexible build plate here. All in all, looks pretty good. Uh, pops off the plate pretty easily, but we did get some good adhesion on it. And you'll see here that we actually did get some of the lettering for the torture ball on it. You can see the number two. And uh, when you look at it just right, you can see some of the other stuff as well. But we're going to go ahead and clean this in the resin detergent and apply the final curing to it. With the resin detergent in it, you basically leave it in a container of the detergent for a few minutes. You take it out, clean it with water afterwards, let it dry, and it's good to go. The next three prints we did were a skeleton D&D mini, a calibration square, and a basically a strength bar to see how much weight uh, the print can hold without breaking. Uh, you'll notice here that the bar uh, did not print correctly. I've had this problem with a lot of other flexible resins. I think what happens with this particular print is that since it's so long with fairly little surface area to get adequate adhesion to the build plate that it will actually you know bend off of the build plate and not print correctly so with these really flexible resins it's hard to get this bar to print correctly for some reason okay now moving on to reviewing how these prints actually came out uh this is before the final curing but after the printing and cleaning and you'll see how flexible this model is uh once it's once the final curing takes place, it does give some strength and rigidity to it, but it still stays super flexible. You know, you can move this around and not have it break too much. Uh, I did basically take this to the extreme and see how much I could do before I broke it. Uh, and I did end up, you know, breaking the head off of this. But once it was gone through the final curing, it actually was a lot stronger the second time around on this print. And then these final two prints, I was not expecting to have work at all. Uh, this millipede that I printed here printed perfectly uh, and, you know, came off the build plate super easily. And basically all the joints were just super flexible and worked very well. So I thought, well, if this worked, maybe I'll try the print that I've never gotten to print before. I have tried this print in every single resin that I've owned. And this is the first time that I've actually had the print come out even marginally successful. Usually all of these joints would fuse together, but this time almost all of them came off the build plate without any fusing. There were some that I had to like kind of break apart and the tail here you'll see is fused together. I think that's mainly because of one, how small it is and two, my bottom exposure settings. But with a little bit of dialing in, I think this could work just fine. So before we get to the final scores on this review, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at our final two tests. First is the strength bar. Uh, and as you can see here, it won't really break, but it won't hold a whole lot of weight. So we're gonna take that into account as far as like durability and how 
much weight it can hold before breaking because I really don't think this thing will break. And then our final test here is the torture ball and we're gonna see how much we can crush it. We're gonna skip ahead to some time lapses and as you can see here, we're basically able to crush it down to the point where the solid plate on the bottom uh, begins to get crushed without any of the lattice breaking. So I'm actually gonna pull it out. I can bend it back into you know a rough sphere without any issue. Uh, and then we're gonna place it back into the vise and we are gonna get down about to uh, where we were before before it breaks. Uh, this is the second time it's been crushed at this point. So that does invalidate the test a little bit, but I think this proves the point on how friggin' strong and durable this flexible resin is. So for our final tally, we're gonna be looking at our torture test, our stress test, our practical test, smell and color. Uh, with the torture test, I think there was like no way it could have really done much better for this. It stood up to basically everything I could throw at it with this torture ball. It printed perfectly. We got some of the lettering, more than I've gotten on most other prints for this. And it basically crushed it and was able to reform without any problem. With the stress test, the bar, yes, it could bend as much as we wanted it to, but the problem was is it didn't hold up a lot of weight, um, so it wasn't that strong. So this one is not gonna be as good, but for the practical test, again, this is the first time I've gotten uh, these Millipede and the Crystal Dragon prints to print properly, even like at all. Uh, every time I've printed this with any other resin on the Crystal Dragon, pieces and parts have broken off of it. And I've been playing with this Dragon and Millipede on my desk for the past couple weeks, and they have had no issues and haven't broken at all. The smell, it has an odor, but it's less strong than many other resins that I've used in the past. And for color fastness, um, this kept its color just fine, even when left out in the sun or in my UV chamber. It does take off some points though, because they do not carry this resin in a ton of colors right now. Maybe that'll change in the future, but for now, if you want gray, you get gray as well as I believe some other colors, but uh, all in all, the color fastness works well. So for the final score on this Sun Lu, resin i'm going to give it a 10 for the torture test a 7 for the stress test a 10 for the practical test 7 for smell and 7 for color this is by far the best resin i've used to date and if you're looking for something where you don't need a lot of rigidity and you want that flexibility and durability i would highly recommend this resin the thing I wouldn't recommend it for is if you want something that's rigid or can hold up any kind of like weight. So I hope this was helpful and advise your decision on possibly which resin to use. Uh, if you're interested in this resin, I'll put a affiliate link down in the description below. As always, if you wanna help out the channel, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. And if you have some other resin or 3D printing item you'd like me to review, feel free to leave that down in the comment below. Have a nice day and I will see you again next time.